Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you just had to stop and ask, what the hell am I doing here? Well, this was exactly one of those moments for me. I had found myself halfway up a mountain in the middle of a rainforest in one of the most remote islands in Indonesia. This is my story of the lost drone and my hunt to reclaim it. Jesus, who thought this was a good idea? So to give you the full story, I have to go right, right back to the beginning. Earlier in the year, I'd set off on an epic four-month sailing journey from the east coast of Australia all the way up into Indonesian waters. The plan was to sail west and check out some of the most remote and breathtaking islands that Indonesia has to offer. Stopping in along the way to meet some of the people that make Indonesia so special. During our trip, we had been blown away by just how welcoming and hospitable the people we counted were. Every island we came across, no matter how remote, welcomed us in with open arms and offered us all that they could with the very little they had. But in all that time we spent sailing, perhaps the most remote place we visited was a small town called Tifu. Carved out of the mountains in the south of Buru Island, the people that lived in this village could only come and go via boat. But like all the communities we came across in Indonesia, they welcomed us in. As we pulled into this small bay, we were greeted by dozens of kids in canoes eager to come out and greet the new foreigners pulling into town. As the guests of honour, we were invited to be part of the yearly tug of war contest, which was taken very seriously here. Well, maybe not that seriously. But this is where the story takes a bit of a turn. The day was coming to an end and we had this gorgeous sunset lighting up the sky. But Trish points out to me that there's this awesome rainbow cutting right through the sunset. I couldn't believe it was absolutely breathtaking, so naturally I chucked up the drone. But what I didn't realize is I was actually flying quite low and we were surrounded by all these huge mountains and then bang, I just lost connection. The screen went black and it's at this stage that I totally panic. I know the drone's only got about 30 minutes of battery left and I know if I don't reconnect to the drone before that 30 minutes is up, the drone's gone for good. So without thinking, I grab a flashlight, grab a machete and hop in the boat and good on my dad for jumping in with me because he uh, took on the adventure and we just headed straight over to the beach started to make our way up the hill, it quickly became dark. I've been up in this hill looking for the drone for like an hour. And I lost connection on the, on the controller, so I have no way of getting it. It's pitch black, I'm just using the spotlight to see where to go, and I have no idea how to get back down. <sighs> uh, we quickly realized we were very unorganized. We didn't have VHF radio, we didn't have uh, the proper GPS location, we didn't have all kinds of stuff, so. After a few hours of making our way through the very thick rainforest, we managed to come back down the hill where we found our boat was about 200 meters high and dry. So that's where we spent the night last night, over on the beach, sleeping in the boat. The tide came in, I mean, the tide went out, and uh, we're left high and dry for the night. There was about 200 meters of rocks between our boat and the water. I'm gonna go try to find a coconut, because I'm thirsty. I'm just trying to see if I can find an okay coconut. Yeah, these ones are all dead. Caught up in a strangle vine. Jeez. So I've actually decided to go with this one, which is just sprouting. So hopefully I can pull it out of the ground. Actually, this one looks like a better pick. See if I can grab him instead. Found dinner. With the machete. Didn't bring a radio, but we brought a machete. Fresh? Oh, it's got 
so uh, we have no way of contacting anyone letting them know that we're here. Uh, so it looks like we're going to be waiting out the night. The tide should be up at about 3 a.m. So we're going to wait until then and then hopefully we can get the boat back in the water. Crabs getting stuck in. Oh, that inside. Yeah. Should we pull up? Oh, wow. Today we are re-energized. I'm going to take this canoe over there and uh, make my way up the hill again. With a bit of luck, we might be able to find the drone. I'm a little less enthusiastic than yesterday. I had all the adrenaline pumping and everything yesterday, so I pretty much sprinted up this mountain. I think it's gonna be a bit harder today. Check out this tree. <laughs> Absolutely massive. I hope my drone's not at one of these ones. It was gonna be very difficult to get back. I've managed to suss out basically the tree line at which the drone's sitting based on a GPS coordinate the drone gave me when it crashed. So hopefully that should get us within five to 10 meters of the drone and then we just have to find out which tree it's in. And the fun part is the spiders like this everywhere. I'm just constantly walking through their webs. <laughs> what a fun way to spend a day. Is your progress, Tom? Yeah, look, we're going all right. I think I'm within about 100 meters of it. How have you gone with uh, elevation there? Uh, I don't know, I'm probably three quarters of the way up the mountain. Yeah, I'm going to just keep bashing through the bush and see, see if I get any closer. Holy crap, you wouldn't believe it, but I actually just found it. Oh my god, it looks okay. I was just about ready to cut down one of these big trees. I assumed I hit this one right here, the big one behind me. And I was like, how am I going to cut this thing down? But somehow it managed to fall through all these leaves and landed right here on the ground. So it's not actually broken, these legs are designed to fold. That looks pretty good. I lost the lens filter off the front, but other than that, a couple scratches, not bad at all. Oh, I'm so happy right now. It's probably been about 18 hours since I crashed it. I've been up on this hill for about 12 hours and it's actually just starting to rain. Oh, thank God I got here in time. I'm gonna make my way down the hill and uh, have a nice celebration back on the boat. If we lost that, there's no way we'd be able to afford another one. And not only that, there's no way we would even be able to get it to Indonesia for the next four months of the rally, which would have been a real shame because we're going to be visiting some awesome, awesome scenic places and would have totally missed them with the drone. I'm not really sure if there's a lesson to be learnt from all this, but what I can tell you is even without a bed, food or water, I was able to find more joy in a coconut and sleeping under the stars than I ever could get from being comfortable. So for me this was a really good reminder that we actually need a lot less than we think we do and that laying under the stars with nothing is actually more in tune with what humans are naturally accustomed to, I would say. And while yes, by the end of two days I was cut up, I was exhausted, I was covered in spider bites, but there was this feeling of euphoria that just followed me around for the days afterwards. I got it. <laughs> but I guess if there is a lesson to be learnt here, it's that even when everything goes wrong and shit hits the fan and you think it can't get any worse, it usually will get worse, but even then, it's gonna be okay. No matter what happens, things normally have a way of working themselves out. But most of all, when adventure calls, it's a shame not to answer. <laughs>